Oh my gosh, we're live. Hi, I'm Nancy K. Smith. I'm with First Weber. I am so nervous about doing this, so please bear with me because I have a feeling that at some point my eyes are going to be like all over the place because this is weird for me. I don't normally record like this. So I want to thank you for stopping by and joining me to talk about the top five things about today's real estate market that you need to know. And I need you to understand that while the information I'm going to give you is pertinent to, to today's market, like anything else involved in our industry right now, it can change at any given time. So we're going to talk about five things that matter today. They could be five things that also matter mattered for the last year, might matter for the next year. But the important thing is this, if you're watching this at some point in the future, be above and beyond April 23rd, 2020, uh, you should probably get a market update because uh, you could very well be dealing with some false information here. So I want to talk a little bit about what compelled me to do this video. The reason I'm doing it is because there are so many people out there asking me all the time, what's going on with the real estate market? What's going on? Gosh, you must not be doing anything. Well, I'm going to give you some proof in a little bit here that we are indeed doing things. We were deemed essential workers by the governor when the shutdown took place um, or the safer at home order, whatever you want to call it, uh, in March. And so um, some agents have chosen to step back. Some agents have just kept on going. We have all found new ways to do our business. Much of that involves the use of video and safety uh, safety features such as uh, using masks, gloves, uh, Clorox wipes, um, but the virtual tours have really taken off and gotten very popular. Virtual open houses where the agent goes to the property and then will maybe live stream uh, a tour through the property. We have buyers who are choosing to engage that way as well. And uh, we're using video conferencing at an unprecedented rate. The thing that makes me think about this a little bit harder is we've had the technology and we could have been doing this for a long time, uh, saving buyers and sellers time, but uh, we haven't been doing it. So now going forward, I think you'll see that we carry through some of these habits that we're engaging in right now. Um, the thing about uh, real estate, I love it. I've been licensed since uh, oh, 1997. I think that makes me 23 years in this crazy business and I've loved every minute of it. Uh, I have always been in this area. So Southwest Wisconsin is kind of my home base and I have worked with a lot of buyers and sellers and I also am a manager. So I recruit and help train agents and um, I just feel like we all survive together. And I also think that real estate is about you, the buyer and the seller not me, not the other agent. I mean, yes, we have roles in it, but um, who we really are here to take care of is you, the buyers and sellers. And so that's who I'm most concerned with. Um, hey, you guys, Lois, Regina, Hope. Hi, thanks for joining. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I love my job. The thing I love most about my job lately is that I get to help sellers get their homes ready to prep for market. So I, I use professional photography and I kind of like to have a little bit of a hand in the home prep for that day and I'm I love doing it. I'm not a home stager, but I sure do love that process. Uh, I have tips and tricks that I'm always happy to share with people about products that I like, things that I think do a real quick, easy, fast job and also make an impact. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion about the real estate market. That's another reason why I've decided to do this. And I think that um, people are getting a lot of mixed messages. We're hearing a lot of things. We hear um, real estate lumped in with the same conversations as we hear investment and investing. And what can be scary about that is people who don't understand the stock market begin to equate what's going on with there and the volatility in that market with real estate. And that's not the case. Real estate is one of the most safest long-term investments that you will ever make. And so for that reason, that's why I think a lot of reasons why people um, have started getting into investing into multi-units and we're seeing a real uptick in that in the past year or two. Um, how did we get here? How did we get to this market? We're, in a, we're already in a market of low inventory. If we went all the way back to 2008 when things kind of went upside down for us or you want to call it the recession or the housing bubble burst or whatever you want to call it, we went through probably three to five years from start to finish of short sales and foreclosures to dominating the market and the traditional home sale kind of had to take a back seat. We couldn't compete with those prices. As things ran out, inventory ran out on that foreclosure, 
then we started getting into traditional home sales again only sellers didn't know where they wanted to go there's a there's no place to rent so that's that's a kind of a mess and what did we do how did we handle that well how we responded was we got real creative and so there's still a lot of buyers out there. We have first time home buyers. We have people who lost their homes into the 2008 to 2012, 13, and they're now coming back into the market. We have uh, people who are downsizing, people who are upsizing. I hate to say it, but if you have not heard these warnings, um, the pandemic is forcing people to be together that maybe don't want to be together. So we might be seeing a, a little bit more of an uptick in homes coming up here within the next six months, um, which is great for buyers. So we have low inventory to begin with. It's gone down a little bit since. And then we have low interest rates, historically low interest rates for historically extended periods of time. And we have a lot of buyers. So that's kind of a perfect storm if you're a seller. And that's one of the things I want to assure you about. And then uh, lastly, I think we started talking about this a little bit the reasons why people were uh, reacting when the um, when the pandemic safer at home happened um, it, how did we respond to that well we've got gloves we carry you know Clorox wipes we've got masks and in fact I carry masks with me so if you're on an appointment you know we are really recognizing the value of the mask right now and as we know it's not just for each it's not just for you it's not just for, for me it's for all of us to slow the spread of whatever it is that's going on so here we go top five things about the real estate market that you need to know number one I've already kind of talked about it buyers are still buying this goes hand in hand with number two, sellers are still listing and selling. And I do have some stats for you too on that. Um, let's talk about markets. Markets can be defined different ways depending on what you're selling. So I'm gonna talk about four markets that are in Southwest Wisconsin that I think are major markets. Dodgeville, Mineral Point, Barneveld, and Platteville. And so I went through the MLS and I looked for some information. Since March 15th, which was when about the stay at home orders took place, there have been three properties listed in Dodgeville on the MLS. Two of those already have offers, and I would say those offers happened within the first week. In Mineral Point, there's been four properties listed. One of them has an offer. Barneveld, six, I'm sorry, five, five new listings since March 15th. One has already sold and one has an offer on it, so there are three still available. And then Platteville has had, hold on to your hats people, 13, and five of those have offers on them. So that is what has listed since we were told, stay home, non-essential workers, stay home especially, right? Now let's talk about what has sold since March 15th. So these are things that might have already been in the hopper when we were told to stay home. So just to show you that things are still moving. In Dodgeville, 11 sold since March. Sorry, somebody was trying to call me. Four of those have had offers that sold within a week. And the average day on market was 147, but the median days on market was 56. I'm gonna tell you why that matters. There's some um, outliers there. There's something there that was on the market for a long time before it sold. And so if you looked at, in general, they're on the market for about two months, but even that was high because four of those had offers on them within a week. Um, the Mineral Point market sold since March 15th, one, and that again was an outlier. It was something that had been on the market for a while and it was a very unique property and it sold for 30,000. The Barneveld market had six sales since March 15th and uh, 201,000 was the average sale price. Uh, four of those offer, or I'm sorry, four of those six had accepted offers within one week and the other two, I think uh, one was a really long time on market, uh, which we're saying these people have been picky. They either buy them or they don't. So they either sell fast or they don't. And that's uh, that's true across the board here. Uh, the Platteville market sold since March 15th, eight of them with, uh, again, we had some outliers as far as things that were on the market for a long time. So about a month is the average day on market for those properties that have sold uh, since March 15th. And by sold, I mean closed. There's new people living in those homes. Um, 
This information is important because, again, it understates the fact that the market is still moving. There is still activity in the market. There's still buyers buying. There's still sellers listing. And so I wanted to, to show you that. There are some things that people ask about all the time about listing. What's my home worth? What is my home worth? Well, you can go online. You can go to my website and click on what's my home worth and go in and type in your address. It will auto populate and you will get up to three values of your property. And if you want to do that, you certainly can. But keep in mind that those, those things are based on algorithms. They're not really, that's not me looking at the numbers. For a much better value, you do want an agent to give you that. Um, so the other thing I wanna talk about is the different types of values. So we have assessed value, we have appraised value, and we have fair market value. Assessed value is what your municipality, city, town, or village is using as a calculation for how much you're going to pay in taxes. How much are you uh, valued at compared to the rest of the people in that municipality? The appraised value, of course, is that's just one day in time when an appraiser goes out and says, here you are, here's the things that have sold around you, and this is what the value of your home is today. Appraised values change, and like anything else, you could have three appraisers appraise your home, and you could get three different values. But I'm going to guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the time, they're all within the same range. And then lastly, we have fair market value. Fair market value is used, um, it's actually used as a term on your tax bill. So fair market value is a percentage of your assessed value that the your township or village or city is using, again, to determine the value of their real estate or their, their properties in their area. Um, for us, fair market value is a loose term in, in my end of the business, and that just means what do we think it's gonna sell for? I never really call it fair market value. I call it estimated sale price. That leads me to the last thing that people always ask me about. What is the difference and why do you talk about the list price to sale price ratio? Why is that important? Well, for one thing, it helps us in the industry determine if there is trends going one way or the other in sales in our markets. I can tell you in the 23 years that I've been doing this, the list to sale price ratio is almost always 93 to 97%. 95 is kind of our sweet spot. And what that means is you will list your house and it will likely sell for about 3 to 7% less on average. Now there's been a lot of full price or overpriced listings lately. Uh, I would say the last two years, we've had a lot of multiple offers and that has driven prices up in certain markets. Not every market has that activity. And that's another reason why you as a seller should be talking to an agent to find out what the activity is like in your market. Number three, we're going to move on. Financing, oh, it's hard to read these. Number three, financing has changed a little. The biggest thing that's changed about financing has been interest, or I'm sorry, not interest rates, credit rates. Credit rates, credit scores. What is allowable as a credit score for you to get a mortgage? There were some companies, some things, you were like rural development, I think, or maybe FHA, was allowing lower credit scores to do closings. Not so much anymore. We were at about 520. I heard of one or two that were a little bit lower than that. But now the threshold has been raised. It's about 640 or possibly even 680 by this time. So because of these changes that are going on around us, lenders are starting to take a little bit less risk. And the first place to cut the risk is to raise the limit on what they allow for a credit score. Other things that are important about financing is to know that some lenders in some cases are allowing drive-by appraisals or desktop appraisals. And that just means that nobody's going to come through the property. They're going to look up records on it. They're going to drive by. They might have to go take a picture of it or take outside pictures of it, but they don't actually go into the property. And so what they're doing is they're just saying, does this property hold this value today. 
So uh, that's something that we haven't had done in a long time and it's only being done now for the convenience sake. Also because there are so many refinances going on right now because of the low interest rates that um, <laughs> it's hard if you wanna buy a house right now, you've got about a 30 day if not more wait to get your appraisal done. So that's important for you to know as well. Um, there's just a lot of competition in that market. Um, with that being said, I think the most important thing about lending that I could tell you is this. It's going to continue to change. There are things that are happening right now that we don't know how it's going to affect us down the road. If you are somebody who was furloughed and you didn't get a check for a month, maybe you got unemployment, maybe you didn't. And then you went back to work at the same rate of pay at the same company. You didn't miss a beat on that. Will they look at that time off negatively? We don't know. And we're not going to know until we have to know, until we cross that bridge, as I like to say. So there are things that we do need to pay attention to in the financing area that are very important and could have impacts on some of us coming down the road. Moving right along, number four. It's getting a little trickier to sell your property without an agent. And I'm going to tell you why. I don't care if you do it or not. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. There, I know that there are people who can do it. Here's the thing. When, when an agent comes and shows your house, you're selling your house for sale by owner. A real estate agent brings a buyer to your house. They are representing the buyer. They are a buyer's agent. They are negotiating the best price and terms for the buyer already. Okay, so you're, you're probably going to be, I hate to use this term, but I don't know a nicer way to say it. You might be out negotiated. You might be out coached on how to handle the transaction because they are representing their buyer. That doesn't mean that they still don't have to give you information and you know um, be honest and upfront with things. There are certain things that we have to do and uh, disclose to you. But as far as the actual guiding and coaching and advising, that is for the buyer at that case. Now we're going to up the ante and we're going to throw in a pandemic with really weird things going on and appraisals and underwriting and, and title companies. And how are we doing this? How are we doing this now? I hardly know. Now, I, I you need to know. So I would say it's gotten trickier. If you are a buyer and a seller and you want to do this without using a real estate agent, I'm going to let me know. I'd like to send you some Tylenol because I think you're going to have a headache. It's the most expensive thing you will ever own. In most cases, your home is the most expensive thing you'll ever own. If, if it were me, and knowing what I know now being in the industry, there are some tough negotiators out there as far as agents go. I want somebody on my side. I'm not going to go do investing by myself. I need an expert to help me do that. I would not try and, well, I do try to like Google like my symptoms and stuff, but that always ends badly. So I go to the doctor because I want the expert to tell me, am I really sick or not? Or do I have this weird disease that I found on Google? Um, no, I want to know. So then I'm going to have an agent help me determine the value of my home in today's market with the conditions that are going on, not to mention how do I control who's coming in and out of my house? How do I handle that? I don't want any more people than I need to in my house right now. So I can't imagine that you would want that in your house. And it's we're going to be dealing with this pandemic stuff for a while. So I do think for your protection, for the, the protection of your investment and your asset, which is your home, I think that it would be a lot better for you to have an agent right now. Um, this is a really good one. I'm moving right along into the fifth one right now. It is a great time to become a realtor and i'll tell you why it is a great time because you have most people have time on their hands now to take the 72 hour pre-licensed course and i got an email today that said that as of may 1st the state testing is going to be opened up again for real estate agents so that's good news so you have time to get your pre-licensed education go in and schedule a time to take your test once you do pass your test you come and talk to me and I will tell you all the great things about First Weber, such as the support, the training, the tools, and we have an outstanding tech department. And uh, I mean, the people that we have working for us are the most amazing people you'll ever meet. My company, and 
it's hard for me to give compliments, but these people, I can't find anything wrong with them. And that's why I've been with them for so long because they continue to push the mark for us. They continue to provide tools. They continue to provide guidance. In this time when nobody knew what was going on, even though we were told we were essential workers and some of us were scared out of our wits, we had meetings on a regular basis with leadership helping us navigate what's going on right now. And I think that's really important. And what that says about us as a company is that they care about their people, they care about the outcome, and they want the best for all of us. And that includes you, the buyers and sellers of our transactions as well. So I don't know if anybody's got questions. I've been kind of watching here. I don't see anything coming up, but I will say this. I think that um, when we start coming back out into the real world, and coming out of hibernation, it's not going to be a light switch. We know that this is coming out in stages. We have to meet this threshold before we can open up this many things. And then we have to meet another threshold before we can open up more things. And we're, guys, we're a social experiment right now. Our whole entire world is a social experiment in hygiene and uh, immun immun immunology. I can't even say that word immunizations. I don't even know if that's been brought into it. But I know that there's no vaccine yet. I know that we're all asking, is there going to be one? What, what about antibody testing? There's so many things that we don't know. And so with that, we are being very conservative and controlled about how we are being allowed access to our daily lives again, our routines. I was going through my phone today and I saw pictures of myself at a restaurant. And I thought, oh, I don't know why I took that picture, but man, do I miss it. I really do miss it. I miss being around people. I miss having a waiter or a waitress come and put food in front of me or asking for a drink or going out to eat anything. I miss all of it. I miss going to uh, someplace where there's live music that I could stand there and be around other people. I miss that. And I bet a lot of you do as well. But it's not going to just be turn the light switch on and we all run like chickens with our heads cut off. I mean, I it, it's going to be slow and controlled. When is the right time for you to get into the market as a buyer or seller? Only you will know that. But I will say this, don't be afraid to do it. Do it with caution, do it with precision, and have a trusted advisor at your side. If you want more information about how we can do that together, all you have to do is message me or look me up, call me, message me, send me an email. You can get to me through my website, nancysmith.firstweber.com, and I would love to hear from you, and I would love to do a consultation with you. I have become an avid Zoom user, and I've even done FaceTime a few times. So, see, we're all getting out of our comfort zone. Come and talk to me. It all starts there. Thanks for joining, and I hope you have a great night. And now I'm going to try and turn this off without looking like a dork, okay?